Hi everyone and welcome back to On The Bucket. Today I just wanted to talk about taming snakes again and uh, what works for me and what helps a lot. Hi! 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 Welcome to our channel! Hello! Hello! If you enjoy learning about reptiles and having a good laugh, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button! Hit! Smash it! Smash, Smash it! Smash. Smash it right now! And don't forget to hit that notification bell! Hit the Smash. Smash. Smash it! Smash. Okay. Smash. Uh, I wanted to just say I think that the most important way to have a tame snake is to handle it from the time it's born. So with all my babies, boas, ball pythons, whatever they are, when they're born, I take them to the sink and I rinse them with warm water. And I basically rub everything that's stuck on them, all the yolk and whatever, and I play with their face. And I'm very gentle, of course. And uh, basically, right from day one, there might be one or two that will be a little bit scared that might hiss or bite or something and right away I'll just hold them, handle them for a while and to me like just even 10 minutes spent with them from the time they're born when they're scared it'll take that fear out of them and then they become used to you and basically that's the very most important time to handle them, get them used to you. The first thing that happened when they came into basically the world is you were there holding them, cleaning them, taking care of them, and you can very quickly shut off their fear of you. If you don't do that, so I've heard people say that, you know, just leave them alone, just put them in their thing and let them be and let them kind of get used to whatever, like calm down. Uh, a lot of like do everything on the snake's terms, not on yours. Now the thing with that is that if you have a snake that's scared, you're not going to be able really to teach it to not be afraid of you just by being nice to it. I find that the quickest way for you to teach them is to just pick them up and basically show them like, hey, see, you can bite me. Nothing bad's gonna happen and we're gonna be okay. And from that, I've had basically zero animals from the ones that I've bred that are aggressive or bitey or defensive or whatever. They all behave the way that this snake does. And it's because I've handled them from the time that they're born. So, the example I like to use is think about a tree. How hard is it to, you know, put a brace on a tree and make sure that it grows straight? It isn't really that hard, and that little bit of effort will keep the tree straight. Once the tree is strong enough, then you take the brace away and you have a straight tree, basically forever. If you let that tree just grow sideways, it's never going to straighten itself out and then you're never going to be able to straighten it out either. So, so many times I've seen with the animals that I've bought as juveniles or adults, and they have this fear, and that fear, it usually never goes away. Sometimes you can get them a little less afraid, but they're still a little bit offset by you. Whereas any animal that I've raised it doesn't have that fear. So, you basically start when they're young and you teach them and they learn. People will say that snakes are stupid and they're incapable of certain things. Yes, they're incapable of complex emotions, but they definitely have some sort of memory because, um, I used to have a coat hanger 
and I would put my snakes on top of the coat hanger to hang out for a bit. And any time that I put a snake on a coat hanger that had never been there before, it would take it maybe like 20 to 30 minutes to figure out how to get down to coat hanger. But once a snake knew how to get down to coat hanger, the moment I put it on that coat hanger, within two minutes it was down to coat hanger. So that means that the snake learned and remembered how to get down to coat hanger. And uh, so they do have some sort of memory and understanding of things. So basically just teach them right from the time that they're little. Hey, I'm here. I'm holding you. I'm spending time with you. And nothing bad's ever going to happen. It's always going to be nice. I even like to give them little, like, head massages sometimes. <laughs> uh, I feel like sometimes they like it. Who knows? Because it's just like... Sure, they might not love us or anything. But it doesn't mean that they don't like certain things. You know, dogs like having their necks scratched and their bellies rubbed. And tortoises like having their shells rubbed. So it's just like, I really think that... If you spend enough time with the snake and you kind of give it little massages and stuff, I think that they enjoy that. Because if they didn't, they'd probably like try and get away, but sometimes they just sit there and let you uh, massage their head. Uh, do, 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 do. Had a pretty exciting week. I got my first ball python eggs. And I uh, picked this gecko eggs, crested gecko eggs, so I'm excited for those. And I'm hoping that my first boa litter of the year comes probably within a month. I really am the worst at uh, keeping records of everything. And uh, I don't know. To say, <laughs> but there really is the feel. There's a way to get the feel of the animal, and once you understand the feel of the animal, it kind of gets rid of the need for all those other things. So it's just I do have a feeding schedule, and my feeding schedule makes sure that I feed them all. If anything's not eating, I know that. So it's just like with everything else, like <laughs> I try to keep track of the um, ovulation sheds and all that fun stuff. But I also found that sometimes keeping track of everything, I just get frustrated when it doesn't happen on the day it's supposed to. Or like I've had some crazy things happen with some of my boas where it's just like I put them together in September and then... Uh, think I'm gonna have babies in like May and then they don't come till July so I try to just kind of instead of keeping records of everything I just watch them all and I say okay this one looks like she's gonna give birth pretty soon and lots of the time <laughs> lots of the time I think I know the night that it'll happen and a couple times I've been right it always happens when it's least convenient so one of the last year's litters, me and Ariel went to the movies and when we came home from the movies at like 1.30 a.m. we had a whole litter of babies. So then I was up till like 3, 4 a.m. cleaning them all, preparing them and getting them all set up. But just... Uh, reminder to just put your time into your animals especially when they are young especially when they're babies you put the time into them when they're little like this and then you have an animal that's just going to be amazing its whole life and it really is special when you have a big snake that's just a sweetheart
I always tell people they, they see boas lots of the time and they think, oh man, it's going to get so big. And it's like, yeah, but it's just like, you see the way the snake is behaving. See how nice it is. It's not going to grow big and then become nasty. <laughs> it's not going to go big and then turn into a different animal. Each snake has their own personality. And when you help them kind of mold into a nice personality when they're this little, they keep it throughout their lives. Unless you could like leave them laying in their own poop or whatever. But that's our talk. Have a good one. Yeah, that was wonderful, wasn't it? Now make sure you click circle. Yeah, click the circle. Yeah, I did. And then watch this video or this one. No. Yeah? No. Yes. It's not that hard. Which one appeals to you more? Is it this one? Or is it this one?